Professor Misa, nice that you can be here. I listened to your very interested, uh, interesting uh, presentation, and I'm impressed by what you told us. Uh, Professor Misra is uh, director of the Department of Diabetes and Metabolic Disturbances here in uh, New Delhi, and director of the National Diabetes and Obesity and Cholesterol Foundation. He has several other functions, but uh, importantly, he is an internationally renowned uh, scientist. There's many publications and many breakthrough publications. I uh, am uh, I'm able to say in this field. Uh, he has many functions which I will not explicitly name here, but uh, we uh, are happy that we can have this short uh, interview. Now you told. Uh, uh, Professor Misra, that the, especially in India and also in this area of the world, uh, the percentage of ob obese people is enormously increasing. Uh, what are the, can you in broad terms explain to us uh, what the causes of this are? Um, this phenomenon, what you're talking about, we have witnessed in the last 20 years or so. And I would say that possibly one point I can remember is when the India opened its economy and the more globalization of the cities, uh, more mechanization, more cars, and migration from villages to the cities has occurred in the last 20 years or so. And as a result of that, the diets have changed over a period of time. And there's westernization of the diet, multiple multinationals who are selling all sorts of food, they are right in sitting in this city and all over India. And they have huge budget for advertisement, they are attracting adults and particularly children for fast foods. So the dietary habits have changed because of this. Mm -hmm. Not that Indian food is any, you know, very good. Food. Some, some of the Indian foods are also very bad. And to some of the Indian fast food manufacturers have copied these Western people. And now uh, a child sitting at home can order a pizza or a burger or Indian fast food which will reach his house in 10 minutes time. So the dietary habits have radically changed with more of the refined carbohydrate, more of fat consumption, more meat consumption, as well as more of intake of trans fatty acid. You know, these commercial oils, which have a lot of trans fatty acid, is being now consumed more by Indian population. At the same time, you know, everybody has a car, and uh, nobody walks on the road. Many people don't walk on the road. So more mechanization, less physical activity, urban stress. Uh, plays a major role. So every all this combined, there is increasing obesity and emergence of multiple risk factor, what is called as mm -hmm. metabolic mm -hmm. syndrome in Indian population. Mm. I also appreciated the fact that you mentioned that in this area of the world, at a lower weight or at lower degrees of obesity, the consequences are more severe. Can you explain why this is? Yes, this is a phenomenon which is seen in India and rest of the South Asian countries. That, that lower weight, there is a high degree of diabetes, there is more hypertension, there is more number of people with high cholesterol, and more people suffer from heart disease at earlier age. Now, it's because of uh, multiple body composition attributes of Indian population or South Asian population. Uh, now, Indian bodies have more fat, which generate more of the poisonous substances, which increase all these risk factors, uh, as, well, as well as their livers are not functioning very well, because again, it is full of fat. Mm -hmm. And liver, as you know, is a factory for metabolism of glucose, metabolism of cholesterol, all these get affected. Mm -hmm. uh, so the fats in the body is more, fat uh, is more in the places where it should not be there, like liver and muscles, and it is impairing with the basic metabolic action, like action of the insulin, and the sugar, and the cholesterol, and triglyceride, all 
the rising at a lower volume. Can you uh, give an estimate of what kind of effect this has on general well-being? How will it affect the ability to function? Or even to what extent will this uh, decrease longevity? Will this shorten the lives of people? Um, Indian people develop diabetes 10 years younger than the Western population. Say West, the average age may be 45 or something. There, people are developing diabetes at 30, 35 years of age. Uh -huh. And as diabetes goes on, it leads to more complication and uh, the problem in the productivity. So there will be absences from the work. There will be more uh, leaves, sick days because of diabetes. And if one develops a complication like a heart problem or a foot problem, long uh, absences from the bar. So productivity definitely decreases over a period of time. I think this is one disease which is maximally impacting the productivity of India. Also, the longevity naturally decreases. So body is aging at a faster rate and any person who is today diabetic has an actual age which is 10 years more than what his physiological age is. Uh, and once that is not properly controlled, there is a premature mortality or premature death. Mm -hmm. So productivity during the young, the age when it should be maximum is being affected and people are dying early because of complication or heart disease. Uh, you are a clinical doctor. Uh, do you think that in our clinics uh, you probably have a lot of attention for this problem, but do you think that on the whole in this world, but also in India, there's enough, do doctors pay enough attention and nurses pay enough attention to this problem? If you are talking about a usual general practitioner uh, who's seeing 30 or 40 patients a day, he doesn't have any time for dietary advice. He doesn't have much time for proper advice for exercise or even stoppage of smoking. So one of the studies has shown that this, these targets, correct advice for diet, correct advice for physical activity and smoking is given only in approximately 20 to 30 percent of the patient, 70 percent mm -hmm. of the patient are just given some prescription and they are told to come back in three months time. Take these drugs, come back. Mm -hmm. Not much of advice is given. That's probably because of pressure of work also and probably because doctors are not very well trained mm -hmm. for prevention of these diseases. They are mostly trained, we are mostly trained from the medical colleges onward for treatment of diseases and prevention is something which is not much stressed upon. Yeah, yeah. So I, in following up on that remark of yours, uh, I find the number or the percentage of uh, that you mentioned so enormous. It's such an enormous epidemic that I wonder how ever the medical profession can, can address these problems. Uh, so then what should we do? What should governments do? What, should, what kind of uh, possibilities we have to tackle the problem? I think no one person or one institution or even government alone cannot tackle this problem. It's such, such a huge problem. So multiple stakeholders have to come together. Number one remains the government. Now what should government do? I think we have to start very early uh, as far as education and awareness of these diseases are concerned. Early means in the school children. At 10 years of age, at 12 years of age, uh, the right kind of diet, what a child should take and what right kind of physical activity he should do. More stress on diet and physical activity in the schools. Teaching the parents also how they should teach their children. So a comprehensive program should involve the school children, teachers, and parents right from the beginning mm. for correct diet and lifestyle. Mm. If that is done, our half the problem is solved. Other half is uh, tackling the people who are already affected, telling them what should be done, increasing our resources in check in getting the early screening for diabetes, early detection for diabetes, and training doctors and training medical uh, paramedical professionals to give correct diet, lifestyle advice to the patients. Mm. In my country, the obesity is especially prevalent in, in 
may I say, the less privileged classes. So the better educated people uh, apparently know how to restrict their intakes and probably move deliberately more. Uh, is this something that is paid attention to by, let's say, the government, your government? Well, this phenomena is occurring recently in India. Yeah. Previously, let's say 10 years back, it used to be rich people who were obese and who had diabetes. Yeah. Uh, while the poor people were still mm -hmm. thin and did not have diabetes. Now the things are changing. The, as you rightly said, like in your country, uh, rich people have awareness about diabetes, the right kind of diet. They have gym in their, in their homes, they can afford any gym and so on. While the poor people still remain ignorant as to how to prevent diabetes and right kind of diet and don't have uh, you know, enough uh, resources to access the correct you know, gym or even, even parks, go to parks and so on. So the things have changed now. In the last two years we have mm -hmm. witnessed that these diseases have increased in the low social mm -hmm. strata. Uh, I think government is just becoming aware of such a thing mm -hmm. and the program with the current national diabetes con control program is now a more of a rural and semi-urban program under the realm of national health, ru rural health mission actually. So the program has mostly concentrated now on the rural areas and semi-urban areas and come to the urban areas only recently. Mm -hmm. And the, the screening for diabetes has been mostly done in the those mm -hmm. socioeconomic strata and slum people mm -hmm. recently. So these things have changed and government has become aware of it. Okay. Uh, I am uh, Peter Souters, Emeritus Professor of Surgery from the Netherlands and I have devoted my full career to the severely ill surgical patients with abdominal problems especially and to their nutritional and metabolic problems. It was a pleasure to listen to Professor Misra and a pleasure to speak to you. Thank you Thank very you, much. Thank you.